Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the Magnum Opus Project. This video will be explaining the extremely advanced main storage slice, which is a both a shulker box display with a small bulk, as well as being an accessible temp storage. And I'll explain what that means exactly, as this is the first contraption to do all of that, and um, it is very complicated, but... I will be explaining it and hopefully it will be more clear by the end of this video. So this is the slice. It is one by tile and it will be tiled uh, to 32 blocks and possibly there will be two modules so 64 slices in total and each one holds four items uh, an identical amount and there is a shulker display as well as a bulk chest where entire boxes can be taken. Now have an example of the UI tiled here. So look this, look like this. The boxes are decently accessible. It's a decent UI for the complexity, as um, I'll explain later. As this UI is very uh, specific in its function. And here is the actual single half module. And this is all the uh, pretty much self-contained logic. There's not much global logic as it's not really possible to do that. So first I'll explain the traditional bulk part. So normally you pretend this uh, short box is full and you will have a bunch of these boxes and there'll be full boxes and you would sort them. So currently the slice is disabled as you can see here and there are two red coders uh, one right here, and there is another up here, and it's parallelized, so there are two inputs. So these work independently and do not interact with each other. So if I were to enable this right here, we can deactivate the slice. As you can see, now this hopper up here is unlocked, which means this slice can take items. So if waters will, uh, items will be coming down here, uh, full boxes. Uh, it would be picked up by this hopper and sorted. And the red code is what determines using signal strength which slice to unlock. There's a few other things uh, that this line does. It changes how the logic works. And among a few other things, it also unlocks this, which I'll explain what that is. But for now, I will be turning the slice off as this is how it will be functioning normally. So you will have your box displayed here and then you'll have item in here and your other items in here and actually to show you that it is um, bug proof you know in case some, something happens in multiple go here so if you were to take an item from here it will detect it box being empty it will break the box and it will dispense and as you can see the item gets aligned on this side of the water stream this is very important because this one over here bounces off this stair and gets aligned on this side. So the system at the end of this water stream can split apart the two boxes from each of the top and bottom modules so that it can differentiate between them and they won't interfere with each other. Um, you may notice that these pistons are waterlogged. This is to um, prevent any boxes getting stuck if there's no more boxes left. So even if it's empty, there'll be water flowing and it'll push. Um, against the wall and it will still function correctly. It's very important as we cannot afford to lose these boxes because of the temporary function. And I'll be explaining that later. And I'll show you uh, this one over here too. Uh, so we can have a item there. And if we take this out here, do the same thing. It will break the box and dispense it. And um, that hit the edge because uh, it's only one my tiled, but normally it'll hit the uh, stair here and it will bounce off and it will align to the side. Now that's pretty simple. Uh, it's a very standard um, type of display. Oh, that's an empty box. Put the item back in there. Um, so put an item back, uh, box back in here with the piston dust. Um, see. Only one got dispensed. And now for the other function. So this is also a temporary storage. And the temporary storage is actually this display box right here. 
So how temporary storage works that I explained in the previous video is you only want to store fully filled boxes, but it's very rare that you will end up with an exact uh, amount of items to fill a box fully. And you always have remaining items. So you need a way to store a box of those remaining items until you get more of those items. So what you do is you have a temporary storage with a box of partially filled items. So let's just say if you're storing these stairs, it will just sit in the temporary storage like this, for example. And let's say you get another box of these. Well, what you do is you take the box from the temporary storage and this new box that you're trying to sort, and you'll take them both, send them to a contraption called the merger, which basically takes the items from one box and forces it into the next box. And this is the first outcome. You'll end up with one partially full box again and another empty one. The empty one is sent back into storage uh, where all the other empty boxes are stored. And this item, since it's uh, not full, it will go back into the temporary storage. And let's say you get another box of the item. This time you will merge it uh, again. If you take all the items out of this one and you will try to put it into this box here. You see, once it's full, there's no more space in that one. You put the items, uh, the rest of the items go into here. And now you have the second outcome. Now you have a full box that is fully full with all the items. This can now be sorted in here as it's a full box. And this goes back into the temporary storage as it has some remaining uh, boxes. And how this works is the temporary storage. So how it can call the temporary storage box, which is this one here, is we can unlock the slice like here. And if we input a box here, so we'd call it with an empty box, the item we detected, it will be broken, and the box will be called, this will be collected, and then merged with the new input box. And during this time, the rest of the system is locked. And even if it turns off, it will still um, function normal, uh, even if this box is empty. It needs to be empty as that's what guarantees that you don't get uh, duplicate temporary boxes. And then once the boxes are merged, you either sort or you have a new temporary box here. And you would send the item back in here again. And the item will get swapped again. Like that. So now the box is back. And what's important is now this dispenser here has two different inputs. Both this dropper here, which is the bulk, and this input here, which is the temper. The temper always needs to take priority. So you cannot have a, any boxes stored here. They need to be separate. And that's what makes this extremely complicated logic-wise, especially on this top one here, as we have to use uh, abuse um, signal strength to both lock this hopper and either activate both of these dispensers, uh, the dropper dispenser, or just this one, because we need to sometimes take a temporary box. So I can show you uh, right here. So if we activate the slice, you'll see this chain comes down, which deactivates this comparator and unlocks the slice as well as retracts the ice so that the item will hit this chain and fall down into this hopper. And once it gets into here, we have an item here. So we need a way to only activate this dispenser without activating this dropper or else we'd get two uh, boxes in here and that would be very bad. So we do some signal strength trickery here and we hard power droppers to both lock this and prevent adjacent slices from activating. It's pretty complicated. Um, there's some uh, other hard powering to activate adjacent slices in specific ways. I um, mean, it took a very long time to get this to work, uh, multiple years in fact, um, but it does function the same way. See, once it takes the item, it will replace it and swap their positions, just like the bottom one. And I can swap it again. The main advantage to this is normally the temporary box is inaccessible. It's in a separate uh, part of the system. But if you don't have a full box, 
that's up to an entire box of items that you do not have access to as the player and especially if it's a rare item it can be very annoying that you are missing out on up to a full shulker box of items but this solves that in a uh, pretty elegant way uh, the actual redstone is extremely complicated but i think it is worth it um the the lag is surprisingly not that bad as it's pretty optimized um there's not many unlocked hoppers you can see they're all locked and the logic is very robust as well as most of it being idle 99 percent of the time and this is um the only global logic here is the this rail here and this rail here which i'll now explain so when this temporary box gets called this global line also gets pulsed and there will also be another shulker box in here in this shulker box will be the packet i explained in the previous video what the packet was it's basically a shulker box with binary encoded data using uh, potions and some unstackable so an example uh, packet would be something like this and each sword and water ball either corresponds to a one or a zero and this will be stored in here and basically this caches the binary code of this so that you do not have to re-encode this um, for the merger when you resort it you already have the packet data from before and it saves a lot of computational time and greatly increases the efficiency of the system and simply just a single dropper storing one shulker box temporarily for this shulker box here so they'll they'll go and enter together and that's basically it for the actual logic the rest is just a very complicated redstone for uh, sp very specific uh, timings uh, as well as um, the locking not activating and deactivating because there are many edge cases for example empty boxes activating deactivating but um, it is 100% uh, covering all the specific edge cases and this is probably the most advanced storage slice ever made and it probably will stay that way for a while as I don't see anybody uh, having a use case for this other than my current project as well as this UI is not really possible in Java as there's some uh, bedrock specific mechanics and um, OB will be releasing a Java version of this it just will not have the additional functionality of being able to take items once this runs out from the bulk which is what makes this very special compared to the other ones other than that that's it for this episode thank you for watching see you in the next one